and powerful submissions, and they will continue to hear those from the people of the uh, north, the people of the interior. They will hear those in every community they go to. If they do go to any small community, they will hear it. They will hear it whether they're in the large communities of Kitimat, Prince George, they will even hear it in Vancouver. Because we have turned down, we have turned down tankers on this coast time after time after time again. I wasn't here. I was still fairly young, hanging out in Vancouver when the Kitimat Oil Port Inquiry happened. But I heard stories of the people who came from Prince Rupert and from up country to Kitimat and stand in meetings and on picket lines and make presentations to make sure that we did not have oil in our waters. And I was here when we had the offshore oil drilling debate in the 19, mid 1980s. I was here and I followed that closely and the union made submission after submission to the inquiry to talk about the deficiencies like we're talking about here and to demand better input and to demand in fact that there be no oil tankers on the coast of British Columbia. And in that case, if people will remember, there was a report that was issued by the panel that was hearing and that report said that oil, oil exploration should go ahead and should occur. But they had a list of I think 130 factors that they said it should occur, but they said it should only occur if X, Y, Z. One of them was local employment opportunities. One was local supplier opportunities. I want people to listen to this because that was the business community saying, we will get lots of oil, our oil prices will go down because we've got offshore oil drilling. They said, we will be supplying everybody. We'll, our businesses will grow. We, people who are unemployed, they try to sell it and saying, you people of the North Coast will get the jobs and the drilling, you will get the jobs. And so the recommendation of the, rep of the panel was that as long as we got the jobs, as long as we got to supply, and as long as a bunch of other environmental stuff happened, we could go ahead with it. And if provincial and federal governments replied in a joint reply to those hundred and some odd recommendations, and the reply was, we cannot guarantee one local person will be hired. The jobs will be posted across Canada if there are any jobs, and they can be filled by foreigners who have expert in oil drilling or foreign vessels who have experts in laying pipes in the ocean or foreign vessels and foreign workers or workers from eastern Canada that can come out and run oil rigs. For the supplier issue, they said they will have no favoritism for people in local economies to supply or local businesses to supply that we will have to compete with the major businesses all around the world and in, and in um, the lower mainland. That's what they did. So we were sick over it because we thought the project was going to go ahead. And of course you guys all know why that project didn't go ahead. A little north to us in Alaska, in one of the richest fishing grounds in Alaska, the Exxon, Valdez, the Exxon Valdez connected and sunk. That was the end of that discussion. Oh, gee, okay, now that's right. Yeah, we had problems in Rupert. We had lots of economic problems. Our pulp mill closed. Fishing was a little shitty. Sorry, fishing was a little poor. And. Uh, <laughs> So what happened was a group of Prince Rupert people got really enthusiastic. A group of three Prince Rupert people got really enthusiastic about reestablishing the offshore oil debate. They caught the provincial government's attention, the federal government's attention, and again we had offshore oil 
debate again, and that took place in the early 2000s. And we had that debate all over again, and the same things were said. Exactly the same arguments were made. The scientific reports of 19, mid-1980s were dredged up again. DFO was asked to come up with another series of reports to update it. And of course, as you must figure, I follow DFO quite closely. So DFO brought, they, they did a, a, a huge study of the impacts on fish, of oil. They're gonna update it for 1980. Maybe between 1986 and 2001, fish and oil decided to mix or something, but they did an update on that report. And you know, that report was never made public. It went through a peer review process, was not accepted, it never saw the light of day. That report is still in the annals of the Department of Fisheries and it's my belief that it wasn't because it didn't pass a peer reviewed process. It was my belief that that was shelved because it showed such deleterious effects on fish from oil, on migration patterns, on juvenile fish, that that report was shelved by the federal government. That's my belief and I will stand by that belief till this day. So now, so now, we're debating it. The fourth time in the North Coast, we're debating whether we want tankers, whether we want oil. And the same information is there. The same response is being held. And I want to say to the people of Kitimat, who I know are hurting, you will not get a whole lot of local jobs. Your suppliers will not be supplying the impact, the possible impacts on your sports fishing industry, on the commercial fishing industry, on your tourism. Those things will impact this community in a far more negative way. People of Rupert have been desperate since before, before 2000, before the last Prill report. And the people of Prince Rupert turned down, the people of Prince Rupert turned down offshore oil drilling and tanker traffic. I call on the people of Prince Rupert to unite with the people of Kitimat, with the people of Terrace, the people all the way through to the Alberta border to say no to this project. Thank you.